Welcome to this presentation offered by uh, VetSpoke uh, on airway surgery in brachiocephalic dogs. My name is Matteo Rosanese and I'm one of the soft tissue surgeons of VetSpoke's team. This wants to be a very practical webinar, so we're going to talk specifically about the surgery and the management of dogs undergoing BOA surgery. However, it is very important to remember that a deep knowledge on the pathophysiology of this condition is critical for, for the success of the surgery. At this point, you have already made the decision that your patient requires or would benefit from an airway surgery. So we're going to address the three components, so the stenotic nerves, the elongated soft palate, and the averted laryngeal saccules. In this picture, from the BOAS research group from Cambridge University, you can appreciate very easily all the components of uh, the BOAS. I usually start uh, the procedure from the elongated soft palate. The position is very important and we are going to operate in a very narrow and deep space. Therefore, we want to maximize the space available. We can use a frame or two fluid pump poles placed on each side on the front of the surgery uh, table. The upper jaw is usually suspended by gauze, which is placed um, around or behind uh, the maxillary canine teeth and tied to the two poles. Uh, then we're going to fix the mandible uh, to the table, trying to reach the maximum opening of the jaw. Um, moreover, we can use some tape just to, um, to use to fix the tongue and to move the lips away. If you are right-handed, the ET tube should be positioned and should be moved uh, toward the right side of your patient. So basically you're going to have the ET tube toward your left side. And an elbow connector for the ET tube will be also very uh, helpful. If it's possible, and if you still need it, also the table can be uh, tilted. Here I left you a list of the basic instruments that you will need. The choice of the equipment is very subjective. Ideally, you want something quite long and fine. For the soft palate, you need a pair of medicine bone scissors, a few mosquito forceps, and a pair of um, long thumb forceps and a needle holder. For the nerves, you um, will need just a number 11 blade and a, a pair of thumb forceps. And for the laryngeal succulents, you will need a pair of long thumb forceps or a pair of Halley's uh, tissue forceps and a pair of medicine bound scissors. It will be also important to have a suction available and um, uh, despite an assistant is not really necessary for this procedure, it will make your life easier. It is very important to closely monitor your patient since admission as they can get very stressed. I will try to operate on them as early as possible so I can monitor their progress during the day. So you can start with the pre-oxygenation and try to secure the airways as soon as possible. Make sure the endotracheal tube is um, capped and well placed. This uh, that you can find is a general protocol that I tend to use during and after uh, this procedure. However, it has to be tapered based on every single uh, patient. What I normally give is uh, omeprazole, and I will continue also uh, postoperatively, and uh, a metrocopramide CRI during the procedure. And before procedure, I also give one single shot of uh, desametasone. Staphylectomy is the resection of a portion of the uh, soft palate. The level of resection usually is um, middle to caudal border of the palatine tonsil. In severe cases, I normally aim for the um, middle tonsil rather than the caudal uh, border. And uh, um, this has to be evaluated with only minimal to non-traction of the palate or the tongue to not over or underestimate the amount of resection necessary. 
Before starting my incision, I want to estimate the amount of resection that I'm about to do, especially the position of the most cranial point, which is at the level of the big tonsil, indicated by the yellow triangle. Resection of the excessive length of the soft palate can be performed with a, a variety of, of instruments, like such as a scalpel blade, a pair of scissors, um, a monopolar, a laser if available, or any vessel sealing device. Um, my preference remain a pair of medicine band scissors. I start the surgery placing three stay sutures um, at the level of the three green arrows that you can uh, appreciate on this uh, picture. The first stay suture is the one that you can see on the right hand side, which actually represents my starting point for the suturing and for the incision. And the second one is the one on the left hand side, which represents my end point for the incision. And the third one is the one where you can see at the moment this least tissue forceps. You can use a pair of forceps to retract or you can use a stay suture. Basically the aim is to retract the palate during the incision but actually to manipulate it um, to help you for the incision and for the suturing. I tend to use the cut and sew technique. So now I start cutting one third to one half of the soft palate with a pair of curved medicine bound uh, scissors uh, following the semicircular yellow line that I show you in the previous slide. I use 3 knot or 4 knot monofilament, rapidly absorbable suture material. Start opposing the nasal mucosa to the oral mucosa in a simple interrupted or continuous pattern. Try to space the suture 3 to 4 millimeters apart. Usually the bleeding is minor and the suturing is enough to create hemostasis. It is important to oppose the two mucosas to avoid any granulation tissue and to reduce postoperative inflammation. When I finish the first half, I finish my uh, incision and I uh, continue to suture till the two mucosas are fully opposed. Here you can see the soft palate in the end of the procedure and um, uh, first of all you can actually see that the soft palate is following uh, this crescent shape incision that we have done and uh, uh, second and most important thing is we, you can actually finally see uh, the larynx that should mean that you have done uh, enough resection This picture is a nice comparison um, before uh, pre-surgery on the left and post-surgery on the right from the same uh, patient and you can see that now you can appreciate uh, much more the larynx. An alternative to the previous technique is the folded flap palatoplasty and this technique addresses all the component of the nasopharyngeal and or esophageal obstruction by reducing the soft palate length and thickness. This is, in my opinion, a more demanding surgery as it requires a partial excision of the thickness of the soft palate, including part of the palatinus muscle, folding the remaining soft palate forward. On this slide, you can find the article with the full description of this technique if you are interested. Then we move forward and um, we're going to approach the stenotic nerves. This is one of the uh, typical and most easily recognized uh, primary anatomic component of this uh, brachiocephalic syndrome and is the second part of um, our BOA surgery. I expect some bleeding. Uh, giving the good blood supply of the nose. Therefore, I want to be sure that my ET tube is adequately uh, cut and I want to check my patient throat at the end of this um, procedure. This involved the excision of a wedge of the ala nasi uh, with primary closure of the defect. Uh, this wedge excision can be made vertically horizontally or laterally um, and the incision can be made using a blade either a number 11 or a number uh, 15 uh, or you can use a punch biopsy um, instrument or you can use also a beaver blade remember that the position of the animal is in sternal recumbency and this time with the head uh, resting on a towel or on a, a foam 
this is how we want our animal on the table so position in standard recumbency with the head resting on the table and um, we should try to make an effort um, to have the nose uh, flat and in a perfect position because we want to remove um, an equal size of uh, nose on each side to have a symmetric uh, nose from the cosmetic perspective. So we're gonna grab the ventral portion of the alar fold parallel to the medial border uh, of the fold with a pair of uh, forceps and we use our um, number 11 blade exactly as you can see uh, in the picture and we're gonna incise parallel to the medial edge uh, of the um, of the forceps so with the aim to preserve the dorsal medial attachment of the alar fold then we're going to insert the blade deeply into the fold and cut downward until we can see the blade um, exiting the ventral edge of the fold. In some large bulldogs, uh, this, the, the cut can be as deep as uh, even 10 or even more than 10 millimeters. Bleeding is usually profuse, uh, so at this point do not uh, panic. Uh, the only way to stop the bleeding will be uh, by uh, placing our suture. So we need to make our second cut, which is the lateral cut. We're gonna start dorsally at the beginning of the previous uh, incision, and we're gonna cut outward from dorsal to ventrolateral, trying to meet the caudal margin of the previous incision. So the resultant wedge will appear pyramidal in shape. Um, the side will continue to bleed, obviously, Till we're gonna start placing our uh, suture. If you need to take some time, just place a, a, a swab uh, inside the nose and uh, um, momentarily the bleeding will stop. Using some four knot monofilament rapidly uh, absorbable material, we're gonna place uh, the first simple interrupted suture to align the rostroventral margin of the remaining. Uh, tissue of the alar fold. Um, what I tend to do is I'm gonna tie the suture firmly but I'm gonna leave um, the ends long and I'm gonna secure them with the hemostat. Uh, I do this because I can retract this suture dorsally to view the ventral uh, aspect of the defect eh? and I can place a second simple interrupted suture across the middle of the ventral uh, defect. I usually place uh, three um, simple interrupted. So the last one uh, will be on the dorsal and um, cranial aspect uh, of my uh, incision. If there is still some bleeding, I will probably place uh, other suture as needed. If I'm happy with the position of my suture, I'm gonna just pack the area with a swab or some Q-tips inside the nose to put some pressure. I'm gonna leave it there for five minutes and by the time um, I finish, uh, the bleeding will have stopped. The third part of our surgery is the laryngeal sacculectomy. So the inverted laryngeal saccus are considered the first stage of laryngeal collapse or laryngeal collapse grade one. If the resection of these averted laryngeal saccules is needed, remain questionable. I tend to do when they create an obvious obstruction and they are obviously uh, swollen. When the laryngeal saccules are averted, they appear as a shiny white convex structures protruding into the airways, cranial to the vocal cords. So in these two pictures, you can see on the left hand side, uh, um, indicated by the green arrow, you can actually see some obvious laryngeal, uh, aversion of the laryngeal saccules, whereas on the right hand side you see a normal larynx where you can notice the vocal cord but you don't see uh, the laryngeal saccules. 
The excision of the saccus are accomplished with temporary extubation or by pushing the endotracheal tube in the opposite direction of the saccus we're, we're going to um, remove. As um, you can see uh, on, the, on the picture, uh, once the saccus are visualized, they can be grasped with uh, either a, a pair of alley tissue forceps or a, a long hemostats and retracted rostrally and medially. And excision can be done uh, using either a scalpel blade or um, a pair of Metzenbaum uh, scissors. Hemorrhage is usually minimal and can be controlled with some gentle uh, pressure and the resection sites are left to heal by a uh, second intention. Occasionally um, it can be a very tricky surgery to do, so make sure that you pay attention to the landmarks and to the uh, structure in that area that you don't want to damage. At the end of the three uh, procedures, we are now uh, ready for recovery, which is the most uh, challenging and critical uh, period. The aim is to ensure an adequate airflow to our patient. So first of all, we need to make sure uh, that we're going to suction all the blood and any fluid or mucus uh, from the throat and there is no ongoing bleeding, especially from the nose. We want a calm and slow recovery. Um, it is suggested to extubate them with the cuff partially um, inflated and to make sure they still have some uh, oxygen uh, nearby. It is very important to have an ongoing uh, monitoring and we're going to observe our uh, patient for any signs of dyspnea and cyanosis which may result from severe swelling or post-operative aspiration uh, pneumonia. If we have some swelling and if we have uh, some respiratory uh, issue it is very important um, to have an uh, intubation kit available, uh, to have some uh, sedation or analgesia already uh, prepared um, and to be ready for temporary tracheostomy in case of uh, uh, severe um, airway swelling and airway obstruction. Um, finally, we can also with all the food for the following um, 8 to 12 hours uh, post-surgery. If our patient recover um, well, uh, the aim is to try to send uh, our patient home as soon as possible uh, to decrease the amount of stress and to living in a comfortable environment. Um, in terms of medication, we want some analgesia su such as paracetamol. Remember not to use non-steroidal if you have uh, given uh, some steroids during the procedure. And uh, you can give a course of omeprazole and uh, metropropamide, especially if they have a history of uh, regurgitation. Um, on top of them, um, I normally advise to use a harness rather than a, a neck lid to be careful uh, with the weight control, uh, to have some exercise restriction, especially from the, uh, for the warmest part of the day, and to use some um, soft, uh, soft food, uh, so to hand feed them with the little meatballs for at least uh, two weeks post-op. We reached the end of our talk on uh, BOA surgery. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions or comment, please feel free to send us uh, an email. And if you have any topic you would like to discuss with us, or you would like a webinar on a specific pathology or surgery, please send us an email. Um, I would like to thank again Vetspolk for this opportunity and see you to the next webinar.